Welcome to a model steamboat named Edith. This is part 22, making the prop shaft and fitting the propeller. But first of all, I need to give the boiler a second coat of varnish. After the first coat of varnish, the boiler looked okay. But it didn't feel okay, the surface was quite rough, and that's because the first coat of varnish lifted the grain on the wood. This is entirely normal. So what I'm doing at the moment is just sanding it off. I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper and I'm using it dry and it's 400 grade. What I'm going to do after I've sanded the boiler is give it another coat of varnish. It's most important to make sure that I sand every part of the wooden cladding, especially the parts at the top of the boiler where the chimney opening is and the bushes. Quite a few viewers asked me how effective was the cyanoacrylate adhesive at holding the cladding to the boiler. Well the answer to that is it's very good indeed. It allowed me to sand it with a belt sander, rub it down with this sandpaper without any of the mahogany strips coming loose. However, when I steam the boiler and the metal of the boiler expands, then the cyanoacrylate adhesive will give way and will no longer hold the mahogany strips to the boiler. But by that time, the boiler will be fitted with three brass boiler bands and it's the brass boiler bands that hold the mahogany strip in place. So if I do require to remove the mahogany strips, all I have to do is take off the brass boiler bands and the mahogany cladding can easily be removed from the boiler in sections. If you watched the last episode in this series where I showed the cladding process from start to finish, you will notice that I also applied cyanoacrylate adhesive along the edges of the mahogany strip, so basically they're all stuck together. But if you remove them after the boiler's been in steam, the cladding will be in sections which makes it very easy to replace. For a while now I've been applying the second coat of varnish using the splendid little flat brush that I bought from the Leeds model shop. And while the varnish is drying, I thought I'd show you these. The first thing to look at is this gas valve, and these are available from Clevedon Steam. These valves come with a mounting bracket, they're very easy to mount in your steam installation, and they're essential in things like steam-powered model boats to turn the gas off if you get into trouble. For instance, if your boiler runs dry in the middle of the lake. I bought these the other day, two tap wrenches and a die holder. And a die. This is an M5 die and I'm going to use this for threading the propeller shaft. The propeller shaft is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and I'd just like to say that yes I am aware that a 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter propeller shaft is a little bit small for threading with an M5 die. But please trust me on this, in this application it will be perfectly fine. This is the larger of the two tap wrenches and the first thing to do with it is take it apart, apply some oil and put the top bit back on. I don't know why these components do not come pre-lubricated. So I thought I would take the trouble to unscrew the end, apply some oil and put the end back on. And now it feels a lot better. I already have this size of tap wrench, but the one that I've had for years doesn't close up to hold very small taps. The smaller of these two tap wrenches will hold really small taps, and I also dismantled this to oil it first. It's over to the lathe now to thread the propeller shaft, and I'm using the adapter that I made in a video a while back, which converts the die holder from a manual die holder to a tailstock die holder, thus ensuring that the thread is concentric with the diameter of the shaft. Here's a good tip, whenever you're threading in the lathe, whether you're using a tap or a die holder like this, Always make sure that the work that you're threading is firmly held in the chuck. Because if the part that you're threading is not held tightly in the chuck and revolves, it will be ruined. This doesn't apply to tubing though, because if you over tighten the chuck jaws on thin tubing, you will crush the component. For threading copper piping or any other thin tubing in the chuck, you need to put a piece of metal inside the tubing that stops the tubing from being crushed. These days I find that my steam oil mixture is very good for threading and the mixture is 1000 grade steam oil 50%, light machine oil 25% and rapeseed oil also known as canola oil also 25%. This mixture that I make up seems to be okay for general lubrication but when it comes to lubricating steam cylinders whether I'm using a mechanical lubricator or a displacement lubricator I would use just the steam oil not the other additives. I find that some machine oils can affect the properties of silicone o-rings. I threaded this propeller shaft completely by hand, but I removed the die under power just to save some time. This is the propeller. This is a Roboche propeller. I'll put the spelling on screen. 
And as far as propellers for model boats go, these are very nice looking things. This is a four blade propeller and its diameter is 80 millimeters. And for this boat, I think that a propeller of this diameter will be fine for this boat. On the right hand side of the picture is the original brass propeller with copper blades, but I think the one on the left is going to be much better. I temporarily fitted the propeller shaft into the boat and I marked the length of the propeller shaft with a felt tip pen. This, by the way, is not the splined union I'm going to be using. I'm going to cut the prop shaft on the second mark. As you can see, I've taken off the propeller and the propeller is going to be fitted to the outer part of this propeller shaft using the lock nut. But to fit the spline connector, I'm using some bearing retainer. I put the shaft back in the chuck to tighten the fitting onto the end of the shaft. There is one important part that I need to mention, and that is the thrust washer. And because this is an aquatic vessel, it's quite important to make sure that the washer is made from stainless steel, so it will never go rusty. To help stop the ingression of water up the prop shaft, and there won't be a lot because it's going to be full of grease anyway, I fitted a silicone rubber collar, but only at the inside end of the propeller shaft. I cut a groove in the prop shaft using a parting tool to take a piece of fuel tubing like this. Simple but effective. It's important when fitting propellers to propeller shafts that you leave some end float on the shaft. For two reasons, one is, if the boat gets warm and everything expands, then it's going to tighten up. But the main reason is to let some water in at the propeller end. Water entering the propeller shaft tube will help lubricate the propeller shaft. But it won't be able to get in there if the propeller is held hard against the shaft. As you can see by this clip, the propeller is very free running, and it needs to be. Before permanently fitting the propeller and the propeller shaft, I used some grease on the shaft, and I also put some grease down inside the tube. But do not, under any circumstances, fill the tube with grease and then push the prop shaft in there, because the drag of the grease on the propeller shaft will really make it difficult for the engine to turn the prop shaft at speed. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.